did. And we would say we provide uh, a communication platform and file distribution platform for people who don't sit at desks. And they would look at me uh, quite incredulously, like uh, that's not possible. Everybody certainly has uh, email and a connection to their jobs and to their companies. And the answer of that is no, not really. They don't. And it is quite shocking. Uh, but here's what is even more shocking. These workers are responsible for two things. And let's see if this resonates with anybody. That they are responsible for product quality and customer satisfaction. Which I laugh is like uh, almost if you were to prioritize everything in your organization, those have to be two of the most important, and it is not something to take lightly. So we're no communication geniuses, but these folks are critical <laughs> to the success of every business. And guess what? Technology they've had for the past few decades. A lot of you know this technology. It's very sharp, very advanced. It's U.S. mail. Um, often, uh, if it's not U.S. mail, it's other country mail. <laughs> it's bulletin boards. It's posters. It's flyers in a locker room, it's a cubbyhole communication, um, which is astounding. I often say my uh, grandfather started a GE in Pennsylvania in the 1930s. Um, they spoke to him and communicated to him, a line worker in GE, um, exactly uh, how a lot of companies speak to their employees today, <laughs> which is astounding. So now what I'd like you to think about as we progress through this next hour together is why? Why has this specific worker gone untouched? What has, the, you know, what has uh, been the reason that they have not been connected? What has this worker not, why has this worker not gained the benefit of this, um, this convenient real-time access to information and communication with their organization to help develop their own productivity? to help reinforce training, or to ensure safety, or just development opportunities. To be closer to an organization um, provides a lot of benefits to companies, but it's certainly very beneficial to employees as well. And it's enabling, and it is empowering. So if we were to connect to this worker, if we were to make use of the smart devices that they're carrying around in their pockets, how would we do it? What should we consider? Um, what's good for the business? What's good for them? Do we share the same behaviors and relationship with information? That's a really, it's a deep question and probably could be, um, we could spend a whole hour on that alone. What is our behavior and what is our relationship with information? And then another act, next hour we could spend is what is the relationship and behavior related to technology? So please think about these things as we move forward today. How do we know that what we are trying to do by connecting this worker is working? What are the challenges that we will see when trying to do so? Um, how do we measure it? What will be uh, involved in tracking the productivity, not only just for the worker, but is it meaningful enough? Um, these are all questions we think about every day at ReadyApp. Um, we've had five years, and we're lucky enough to call many Fortune 500 uh, companies customers. So today in our webinar, again, we appreciate you joining us. We are, we're pitching somewhat of a, this is like a, a fast pitch softball. <laughs> we are uh, pitching a somewhat tongue-in-cheek analogy to drive our thesis of our business and hopefully have a bit of dialogue with you about the feasibility and the implications and strategies for, for taking this challenge uh, head on. Um, so there is, uh, it's going to go actually quite fast. I'm going to try to stay slow, but really these, these slides are fun and the whole idea of, of cats and dogs and animals um, is exciting uh, and fun for us because we have a very um, dog. We don't have a cat friendly necessarily office, but we do have a very dog friendly office. So anyhow, we will get started. We have a lot to consider as I, uh, as I contemplate how to get your attention, how to uh, make sure that as you're just listening that this is a beneficial hour for you. So I often ask, and is when people, and that's why we ask for your email addresses. Um, one, we want to share kind of what our vision of the world is related to communication, but also um, we want to know where you're coming from. We want to know what companies you're in. Um, we need to know who you are, right? We, they always say, that's what they say, get to know your audience. But uh, on the phone, it's difficult. How 
how will we get to know you? What's relevant to you folks uh, when I can't see your faces or your body language? Um, we have slides up on your desk. We're hoping they catch your eye. We're hoping that my voice isn't monotone or boring. Um, but we also want to make it beneficial for your time. So it's really just a matter of finding pertinent subject matter, like a meaningful message. However, um, this is one you probably all want in here, right? Isn't it? <laughs> I, believe, I believe the way we get to know our audience is by speaking to them. Maybe not all face-to-face -face in our case today, but there are options. There's surveys, there's informal gatherings, feedback, supervisors, etc. So my method uh, is going to be really via just this first quick little poll if people will participate. Amy, do you want to ask our first poll question? Yes. Um, hi again, everybody. Um, to get to know you a little bit better, as Jonathan said, we'd like to know if you have worked an hourly job in, during your career. So if you can please answer yes or no in the chat box of the control panel. Um, if you have minimized the control panel, you can click the orange arrow at the top of it to expand it. Type your answer in the chat box. Be sure that organizers is selected in the to dropdown and click send. We will tally your responses and speak to them in just a few minutes. If you want, you can also include the type of job that you had. Maybe it was at Taco Bell, at Macy's, or Ford. How are we looking? Yeses, noes. We're tallying this, this great information. <laughs> Thank you guys for all participating. That's nice. It looks like about 80%. Is that to you guys? Yep. A singular wireless person out there. I know singular. That's great. So yeah, I mean, th this makes sense. And it's kind of what we assumed, as many of us have experienced. Most of us can, can truly relate to being an hourly worker. Now, I remember it, certainly. Um, I worked through college. I, was, uh, I did a whole bunch of different things. But waiter was one of them. But we didn't ever think at that time, um, and I'm a guy in my late 40s, so I didn't think about how, what my relationship or my behaviors was with information or tech at the time. But it's obviously the world is changing. Consumers and tech have encroached in many, many parts of our lives. So you know, we have to kind of put ourselves in that mindset and behavior, behaviors of what hopefully some of your workforce are. So let's, start, let's get started here and just talk a little bit about the medium for uh, the message. Like, what is going to be important for us? Um, our, our power, you know, you, as you cast your eyes on this busy slide, our PowerPoint slides, the end of all, be all of awesomeness. I mean, I, I love me a good PowerPoint, but, you know, you can see what can happen. These are um, real slides, by the way. <laughs> I Hopefully, some of them, uh, not your alls, uh, that we've stolen from the, oh, look at this. This is... This is, uh, somebody actually made that. Who does that, for goodness sakes? Anyway, I'm sure you've already got a, a serious case of uh, slide fatigue and, and overblown information, but medium is important. And we often think about what we have to do, especially in webinars, um, to get people's attention. Is it juggling? Is it uh, inserting video? Or let's do a poll question. We certainly want you all to be involved, and we want to get your attention. But, um, you know, it, could it be an operetta? I could sing. No, I could not sing. Um, about the perils of internal uh, communication. It's uh, certainly uh, there is real drama behind communicating once you open yourself up as a business to communicate with all of your employees. So alas, today, you know, the, the medium that we're doing is, is uh, fortunately or unfortunately via PowerPoint. Um, and we're hoping, you know, that the messages will, will certainly uh, stick with you. Yes, great. Thank you, Steve. Uh, he is, uh, he's probably right, which begs the question, what are all of you thinking about me at this point? You sit there, we're at lunch, webinars are fun, right? It's like, can they keep my attention? Am I bored by this yet? Um, I have not had enough caffeine. I may not have eaten lunch, but some of you may be eating lunch and munching away as you, as you take a look at this and you're wondering and staring at the slides, uh, what am I going on about? Who is this guy? Is this a waste of time? It's really not, I promise. Um, but we need some breaks in the day, right? Um, what am I talking about? Why uh, is this engaging? Do I exude authority as the CEO and founder of ReadyApp? Am I relevant? Why are cats on the screen? Well, that's the whole purpose of our meeting this morning. Tell you these things uh, about 
that you can hopefully just kind of nod along to, but hopefully take away some morsels of why this is valuable and benefit to think about an audience this way. Um, hopefully to provide some relevant insight. So I'm Jonathan Irwin, I'm the CEO of ReadyApp. We are a mobile workflow communication and file distribution platform. And we are allowing uh, companies with workers who don't have at company email to organize, enable, and facil facilitate engagement. And not just for communication's sake, which is often what um, information workers do to communicate and collaborate. What we have is a cross-functional platform that enables HR to communicate messages on the ReadyApp Highway for a training group to ensure and reinforce training that's been conducted live or to reinforce safety for the um, safety of the workforce and for the business, compliance, uh, change, new product introduction, emergencies, you name it, ReadyApp provides this very organized path to this worker. The information that I'm sharing with you today comes from our experience in the field. A good amount of research, including uh, a white paper that we've recently conducted and um, put available for most folks, and some of you may have downloaded it already, uh, about internal communication trends, specifically with non-desk workers. Surprisingly enough, what you won't find with ReadyApp are what people are often considering, which is news feeds. Um, which we know it's kind of the route of Twitter. If you miss that feed, how far back will you go? And is there true engagement in a news feed? Uh, can employees like messages from the HR person? I'm sure that's always <laughs> something that comes up. I'm not, I'm not sure how often people are liking our HR messages or our safety messages. This isn't a liking platform or we don't share information either with each other. This is simply this worker is not built for that. So I would encourage all of you today to really consider these things as you, as you go to the next step of what is pertinent and valuable for this specific worker. And I might mention the last thing that we don't do that uh, a lot of folks do do is this concept of reply all. We are a workflow product rather than a collaboration product. And in workflow, there really, unless you have permitted so, is no such thing as reply all. Reply all can create noise. Um, so, maybe thinking, okay, oh, another one of those uh, app companies, um, signing from the seat of our pants, coming to town with our dog and pony show, I've signed up for this webinar, what have I gotten into? It's close, it's not a dog and pony, but it is a cat and dog show nonetheless, because this is really the most effective way that we've been able to share the analogy of what ReadyApp does, and it's the behavior of these furry animals. <laughs> so. Cat people, dog people, ferret people, uh, tropical fish people. They all tend to be different kinds. Not always, but sometimes they are. So some people, uh, this is kind of a um, polarizing topic, really do not like cats. Uh, they are cat haters. And uh, I'm sure there are some folks out there. And by the way, this as a disclaimer for some of our conversations today, I am... Uh, I'm using the occasional cat or dog analogy, yes, please, but I'm not calling any of our of the folks you find people who are <laughs> choosing to spend this hour with us dogs or cats or even your employees. Um, it's just that people wanting to learn, identify more with this, this is a great way. So Boots and Fido here um, are going to help lead us through, and uh, I've decided kind of which direction to go. Um, it's these 27 principles of value-added interstakeholder communication. Sound good? No, it does not sound good. Um, it's really, I had 31 originally, but that seemed like it was a little bit overdue. No, I'm actually kidding everybody. So um, uh, you don't have to hang up the phone. Nobody, nobody jump off <laughs> the webinar yet. I've actually only got three. It says in my notes here, pause for a collective sigh of relief on the webinar. So there you go. Um, it's really getting better already, isn't it? So these are our three. It is about really deeply understanding your audience. It is about really deeply understanding the medium and the relationship with that medium that you choose to engage those employees. And of course, it's messaging. We say this a lot, and I, I often sometimes will do these webinars and I'll talk ahead of myself in slides, but I gotta tell you, messaging is different today than it was uh, 
three years ago, four years ago, five years ago when I started this business. It's different from 10 years ago for sure. And not only that, but it's not, when you're thinking about eight and a half and 11 versus a small two and a half by four inch screen, we must think differently about these different mediums. Said beautifully by one of our big global customers, in fact. We have got to stop thinking in eight and a half by 11 type of messaging. So, suspiciously simple, right? Um, we'll see. We'll see here as you guys go along. But the first is really you know, know your audience. So I broached this idea of what does that really mean? So I know that um, probably I know everybody enough that the subject of 27 principles of anything, let alone value added inner stakeholder communications is a little bit more than you want or need. But I'm also smart enough to know that Cute, cuddly images um, of dogs and cats is also very fun, and hopefully everybody gives us glowing remarks in our surveys afterwards about um, if this uh, was valuable, a benefit to you, and you think back to these cuddly videos, or these cuddly um, pictures, I should say. But let's get to the first pet analogy. So you say you want to communicate to your dog or cat that you care about their needs, and you would like to reward their good behavior with a perk or some kind of recognition, a benefit of some kind. Great. If you have a dog, you're going to go out and buy a scratching post. Here, doggy, I got this for you. I always love this visual. Um, I got this for you, or for your cat, you're going to pick up a nice big rawhide chew. Uh, of course not, but, but we, we have these pets in our house, some of us, and, but we treat them very differently. And why is that? It's the relationship between that pet and the things and their behaviors and their instincts and their DNA. So. Um, you know, we are not going to do this. Of course, we know our audience better than that. But in the same way, employees need communication that's meaningful and respectful. And, it, and this is like the kicker that we continue to find ourselves in a position in coaching many of our global customers. It has to be, I know this is going to be a tough one for people, engaging. <laughs> it might be that you have to have pictures of cats in dishwashers or something funny, wet cats, dogs jumping in water, whatever it is, to get the attention of this worker. So it really is something that um, we feel very strongly about. But fulfilling those communication needs will make those employees receptive to your message. And what we have often found is we have, we have just pelted our, our workforce and our employee base with things that may not be super specific to them. So ideally, this will help us create a real dialogue. So the last thing we want to do is communicate at people. I know many of you out there, and I'm sure as people start to consider leveraging smart devices of their employees, they think about, um, should we just get something we can put in one message and it gets blast to everybody? And that's not really, that's speaking at people. And we want to really try to encourage folks to not, um, that's not communication. It happens a lot. Communicating to them in a meaningful way is a great thing, but, but communicating with them is even greater. It really is, and it, when you're talking about smart devices and this workforce, it is, uh, and I say this to my sons, it's next level thinking. They, they have levels to the next, I'm not exactly sure which level this is, but it is next level thinking, and frankly, it really is the future. So we must be ready. If you want to create productivity within your organization, we must think about this differently, and we must start beginning to think about what engagement, medium, and communication is. So as I said before, it is changing. We are in a culture of sharing, sometimes oversharing. And the internal communications is not really just a, a one-way street. And it's not even, in fact, a two-way street. It is a multi-lane interchange. And it can get confusing. But we have to learn to trust ourselves and our employees behind the wheel. If we don't, we won't get anywhere. So our companies will basically just stall out. Um, anyway, enough of the traffic analogies, et cetera. Let's, um, as they say, let's let the, uh, this is, you know, this was written ahead of time, but let's let the dogs out. <laughs> I would have a barking, there is a song there. We should have more visuals or more sound bites in our webinars, but alas, we do not. So consider for a moment that your employees represent a lot of different breeds and even different species in terms of their sense of, of purpose in their background. Again, as I say these things about these dogs and cats, think about your workforce. In terms of a sense of purpose, background, and disposition. In order to communicate, or even communicate to or with them, we must know them. And we must know what their needs are. So 
Having said that, let's just start with a couple examples. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Great Pyrenees. So, um, I don't know if anybody has a Great Pyrenees out there. Um, you could type yes in your chat box, or you don't have to, but it would be fun if somebody did have a Great Pyrenees. They certainly would know where we stand and what we're talking about here. These dogs are great workers. Their job is to oversee and protect. All right? They don't herd. That's a really different skill set. And they're way too slow to chase things around. <laughs> but they watch over the flock beautifully. They're independent. They are confident. And they tend to think they know best. So let's just say they don't always come when they're called. So that, too, can sound like some of the employees that might be on the webinar today. Anyway, that's 2,000 years of breeding for you gone into the Great Pyrenees. But with most dogs, um, even more so, the Pyrenees does not respond well to anger or hostility, or, or, or does any living thing, right? You shout at a Great Pyrenees, and they actually look at you like something's wrong, like uh, they think you're a nutcase. You've lost control. In the dog's eye, your authority is diminished, um, which I love that picture. You disappoint me. It's sort of like the all caps email to the Great Pyrenees. It's like, this is not a great thing to do. And people who aren't familiar with communicating, maybe this doesn't happen as much nowadays because the all caps emails have been uh, debunked. And I think that, that, that habit or that behavior has been pulled, although I still see it some places, Amy. Mm -hmm. And in a similar way, there are uh, they're bird dogs. They're uh, like the Brittany Spaniel. It's like these are the field reps. These guys go out. I've had one of these because I know, and I might be a tad like them, but I will not admit it, that they go out, they come back, they're focused, and they're busy, and they're out trying to find stuff, bring it back to you. They definitely understand the task and are, like the Great Pyrenees, receptive, I should say, maybe not a compliant, but receptive to commands. But if you take the wrong tone with these pups, and they'll get anxious. And they may not they may not challenge your authority like some of the, the breed that we just talked about in the Pyrenees, but they will ease off on the amount of work they're doing simply out of fear of doing something wrong and having to, for you to go off again. So that is, when I, we think about um, the reaction of communication to employees, we must be highly sensitive to what types of employees and the type of communication that we're providing. It, same species, dogs, totally different breed. The Pekingese, stubborn, strong-willed, pees on the floor a lot. You got to admit it, people, they do. Um, basically, your IT department. <laughs> That's a little fun joke that we like to have. We actually sell as ReadyApp into operations and communications um, and HR folks and groups. And so IT typically comes into the room and rubber stamps what we have to do, make sure that we're secure and compliant at a global level. Um, but we love IT and we, um, we often joke with them. So they're extremely smart. They're lovable, just like your IT folks. They like to watch over their kingdom from the couch with their calm, inscrutable gaze, not caring about exercise. And then suddenly they'll burst out and be silly and playful again. So, you know, IT. <laughs> but scold them, and they'll resent you. You don't want that. Definitely not with IT. So, and then, sorry, haters, here's the, uh, here's the cat. And for cat lovers, this is your time of the webinar. Quite literally, very different animal. We all know how quirky and independent cats can be, how intelligent, how vain, uh, how manic, or really how lazy. These are the creatives. <laughs> this is the creatives of our audience and our employee base. And hurting them is damn near impossible. So they don't want to be bothered, especially when they're napping. <laughs> they're like, keep, keep your hands off of their time. This is very true of cats and creatives, I might say. But research shows that really across the board, employees are becoming resistant to always being on. So another uh, thing to consider as, you, as we think about communicating. It turns out that the great cataclysm of tweets and texts and likes and follows has created uh, a little bit of communication fatigue. So we have to be sensitive to that. Uh-oh, but aren't we trying to communicate more? Isn't that what we want? Well, uh, I think we would say not exactly. What we're trying to do is com communicate more effectively, try to communicate smarter, not exactly the way that us information workers have gone about it for the past several decades. It is not the same. You can't herd cats, but you can engage with a cat on a one-to-one -one basis. 
usually. What happens when you put too many dogs in the same area? They tend to get a little nervous or there's pack confusion. But if you break those dogs out into small groups by size or disposition, you know, things start calming down. So as you think more about um, your organization and the likes and the things that you're trying to do from an engagement perspective, imagine this whole menagerie of different types of dogs and cats. Rabbits, boa constrictors, pot belly pigs, you name it. I don't care what you have. But um, consider that in your audience space, you have anxious types in the office, a uh, million email clogging their outlook. You might have reps in the field, different states, different countries. Maybe they're just calling into phone queues, uh, not engaged. You're, you're really playing a trust game with your mid-level managers to create and ensure the fidelity of your message from the very top of the organization. So we'll talk about some of the or some of our customers that the way that they have created fidelity all the way down to global businesses of, with employees in different sites and places uh, and countries, etc. So you have these whole battalion of hourly or non-desk workers here, some of them without corporate email, tethered only to headquarters through a shift manager or a few posters in the break room. So typically that's our audience. This is your group, and you need to know them. And you need to find a way to communicate meaningfully across all of these different walks of life. And you need to be a little bit of an employee whisperer. So it means we have to stick our head in the game and understand what people want to see and how they want to see it. And often, they don't exactly know. When we have found that when an IT group is responsible for finding and selecting a communication platform, guess what? And I don't know if you know this, but IT people aren't always the best communicators. <laughs> they, they communicate in a very different way. And for them to be responsible for the selection of a platform to communicate is really, um, we have found, not always the most um, uh, uh, appropriate group to be vetting uh, potential platforms. So you need to be an employee whisperer. You need to understand the needs of your group and how they want to do it and the architecture of the ways that you're going to communicate because people just often don't know. So crafting your message is what we say the next thing. It's, you know, obviously this is the way that we get our message across. And a whisper might not always get through, but even when you shout, it has to be clear and engaging. So all very common, um, well-understood things. So a well-crafted message. Now for mobile, uh, is actually in for the non-desk worker who doesn't sit at a big uh, computer screen all day long uh, has to be optimized and it has to be the right message for the right person and often at the right time. Blast messaging, and I, we found this out early on, is everyone's message is really no one's message. So it's not enough just to try those messages and make them stand out. You know, we have we must, we must stand out. They must stand out to even have a chance of being consumed by our audience. So, after all, employees are bombarded constantly by both signal, what we call signal, which is, you know, the, the message you want to get across, and noise. And it's gotten very hard to tell them apart. That old stalwart, the company intranet, will contain messages that are relevant for some employees but not for others. So an intranet is sort of like a big fruit basket of signal and noise. So if you'll allow me to um, wax uh, gumpian, I guess, uh, would be the term, a box of chocolates. You know, employees open it, they pick over the contents, they find one or two that might suit them, and then they close the box. But it's not always clear what's inside of each chocolate. They may try a few, none of which are that great, <laughs> which I often do, and then just feel full. Um, instead, let's imagine sending a particular employee a small box of their favorite chocolates or ones they're able to consume directly to their door, wherever they are. So you have to deliver content that employees want to read and engage with. I think we're beating this one to death, but um, sounds rich and delicious, right? <laughs> Everybody's getting hungry, like I did not have my dessert. So the right tone, one that's a little light or humorous, or at least that shows you how to put the human in um, the human resources folks or the communications folks, it's not just HR messages. This, epitom you know, this epitomizing of internal message goes all the way to the very top of everyone's organization. Um, but it's not just HR messages, like I said. This goes to the executives. So you can't just um, lord over employees like a, a pampered Pekingese, if you will, that pees on your floor all the time. They have to jump down and exchange a few good butt sniffs 
humanizing a company's executives is critical and the right messages achieve that. Communications that come down you know, from on high in a manner that is uh, both open, um, cordial, empathetic, or for goodness sakes, human. That's really important now more than ever. And many exec executives just aren't comfortable with that. That whole idea. Many aren't digital natives, if you will. So um, the folks that are on our phone today, the folks that are considering reaching out to these, you may have to digitize them. Um, they're often slower to adapt new technologies. They are moving at very fast speeds. So they like to keep things as they are. Um, they may not be used to the new uh, communication platform. So at ReadyApp, uh, this is another one of my favorite slides. Um, that's one of the biggest fears. How do we help change behavior? How do we escort people into a new way of thinking where the most prominent medium is the mobile device? And it really is about behavior modification and, and encouraging people to be the employee whisperer. And at ReadyApp, we have a success team. We have an account management team that sits with customers ongoing forever and we share data with them and we share measurement with them and we share what other companies are doing around the world to engage people who have not been engaged before. So in dog training, um, visual commands are invaluable. You can communicate you know, visually to a dog, you remove all that potential anger or tension in your voice and those inconsistencies. And you know, a dog might learn it first with a combination of visual and verbal um, and before long, all they need is visual. So research, good old common sense tells us that internal communication visuals are extremely important. So not only um, is it the content and the message style, but it's actually visuals. So often, you know, don't or show, don't just tell. So when crafted well, we do this a lot at ReadyApp, a visual message, a chart, an infographic, a video can be both fun and meaningful. It can do a lot of work. I don't want to um, underestimate. We have senior vice presidents of HR in 10,000 person companies who are taking iPhone selfie videos and sharing them with audience and actually sharing in a very private and secure way very specific company information. And that is so powerful for someone who is trying to reach across geographies. So anyhow, sometimes um, putting too much work into a visual, by the way, is too much. So we've talked about this before. But done right, visuals can convey information in a very appealing way. They can cut through all of the chaos and into what we call a uh, connection. This is one of our, our guiding visuals at ReadyApp, our MO, if you will. We take all of this noise and, and different varieties of channels and mediums and communication and we connect people. So, uh, of course, visuals don't replace written communication or spoken communication often. They just supplement them. People have different learning styles, different ways of processing information and should really be thought of more as a don't just tell, show as well. I can tell you about using technology to turn chaos into connection, but, you know, and then amplify that with a, you know, our, our video here that you see, I mean, I'm sorry, our image here that you see on the screen. But, and this is a big one, sometimes neither showing nor telling, <laughs> as we often know, is effective. Getting a response from that employee base is sometimes hard. Um, have you ever tried to make a cat sit or roll over? It's simply not happening, at least not with verbal commands or hand signals. They really don't respond much to praise, which, oh, cats are fun. I don't have one. But they are funny and independent and peculiar creatures. So moving on, engage meaningfully with a cat. If there is such a thing, you need a whole different medium of communication, which brings us to catnip. They go crazy for it. Cats love it. With a dog, you've got some options. Verbal commands, visual commands, praise, petting, treats. I think you saw on the title slide there, I have two golden doodles, very different. They're actually both very different personalities and they respond even though they are the same breed they respond very differently so um, really interesting to see that even in the same breed cats like to be stroked gently maybe brushed now and again but careful <laughs> not too long stay away from that belly <laughs> for a few seconds it's bliss and unless you have that cat declawed 
then uh, you stick your hand into a paper shredder, which is often funny. But catnip, downside there, highly targeted, highly efficient, high levels of efficacy. So anyway, too much and they might get a little frazzled, which is awesome. They always get more. But anyway, as what does that sound like for your internal? What is your internal communication catnip? There will be something if you decide to take on this this process of communicating with this untouched worker that you will find is your communication catnip. And the game changer, the behavior modifier, what is it? Is it going to work? And will it work at work? We kind of know that Facebook has become a little bit of social and consumer driven catnip. Um, we might challenge people to take that same concept of social and sharing and liking and noise into a corporate environment when people are working on product and working with customers all day long. Getting to having them go and be social in work is not necessarily a great dovetail to or experience for them. So just food for thought. So could dedicated internal communications from HR to frontline or non-desk employees from management to the workforce in the field or in the plant or in the hotel or on the grounds of the facility, or in the sky, or wherever those employees are, or even employee to employee, if you want to enable directory, is that important to do for you? Do you want to disable directory to make sure that people are getting just pure signal? This is something that we take very seriously. This concept is integrated into smartphones, and it's greatly diminishing the need for, if not wholly replacing, what people are doing today, which is US mail, bulletin boards, flyers, posters, company internet, or or even kiosks on some plant floors. By the way, without liking or without news feeds that get missed and sharing with your buddies on second shift, you know, is it possible? Yes, we would argue that the creating a connection to an, to an employee base and enabling a manager to be more effective to manage a plant and communication and instant change or turning on a dime or weather information or safety information is a very, very powerful way to communicate and track the measurement of that engagement and communication. And really what we would say is that likings and the news feeds and such are more distraction than anything else. It's what we do. We hope it's powerful. Five years ago, this would have been a little bit of a pipe dream, and now it seems almost inevitable. The use of our smartphones for work-related communication is not surprisingly growing, and why shouldn't it? But it has never been leveraged in this specific way. And what we would uh, communicate to IT groups or people that might provide mobile devices for large enterprises, they're providing them to a specific group. We're not advocating for providing smart devices, multiple smart devices to different audiences. What we're advocating is your workers have specific devices today. Let's leverage those, that capability to give them the option to get closer to the organization, to give them the option to get developed within their company. So as for a medium for employee communication, it is the most relevant and engaging. Employee smartphone is the medium with which he or she is voluntarily connecting with the world. So it's very tough even to not get a smart device nowadays. Um, it is a great social outlet. It's an outlet for leisure and exploration and fun. It is familiar and it's comfortable. And guess what? It belongs to them. It is always with them. They can't live without. Now, they just may use it for text or for Facebook and phone, but they certainly understand the concepts and the potential growth of it. So actually, to be accurate, based on some of our research, the smartphone may not be the only relevant and engaging medium. You know, internal for internal communications, it's um, intranets said, you know, in, intranets are great but HR managers that are managing to a, a group of people who do not have access to computers is tough. So wearables it might be the next incremental frontier. Well, maybe not, <laughs> not like if you're doing open enrollment that you get t-shirts and you wear that around and you're hoping everybody sees you. Not a bad idea, actually. No, that's better. That's, that's a better <laughs> um, uh, use of uh, a wearable. Be on sale in our online, <laughs> our online gift shop after the webinar. Not really. Merch table is what we called it. Um, anyway, of course, I mean watches, other wrist devices. 20% of Americans currently own a wearable. Is that insane? That is a lot. So uh, it won't be long, everyone, 
as we start thinking about how we may access different ways. Those wearables are communicating our steps to us today. Who knows what they will be communicating? There, and some of them obviously communicating a lot more in the Apple Watch and the Android devices that are out there today. But be it a smartphone or a tablet or a wearable, this medium is a galaxy of potential for you, I would argue. Combined with the right messages and targeted internal comms, optimized to be relevant, meaningful, or interesting, it's a very, very powerful thing. So, message medium, they've got to work together. Right message, right hook, and the medium is at a real disadvantage if you have the right message and you have the hook, but you don't do it in the proper medium. Smartphone's great, but then we also have to make case for the app itself. It's a big component of employees' work life, taking space on their personal devices. So we have to demonstrate the benefits in a very big way. One of the best ways, we believe, is to start with that hook. This is always, uh, again, maybe it's my fourth favorite slide, but um, certainly the medium of changing the staff meeting and its whereabouts on the side of a building, certainly not timely or relevant. So. I have a couple examples as we finish up here of things that we have done. One of my uh, favorites and, and one of the first companies that um, decided to use ReadyApp, not only just at GE Appliances, but across m multiple divisions of GE around the world, they have a large hourly worker. Um, and they have a, uh, a big union presence and a union relationship that's important to them. And uh, if you are an hourly worker at GE, you have different shifts at different times based on productivity. And you might be able to sub for other folks. You might be able to take different shifts on different lines. And you might need to know what overtime is available. Often those have been trips to the HR office or video screens or kiosks or workstations. So you're not at a desk. You spend your days or nights on the factory floor, and so you really don't access those things as probably as often as you want. Because guess what? You're tired. You've got a big job. And you're building great product. So they have, at GE, this big job board. And it's a big part of folks' lives. And they have to be able to access it and see it and see what's available for them and see the changes that are happening on production lines. And so one way to do that is through ReadyApp. They do not have desks. They do not go to computers. And often when they do, guess what? There's a line behind them of people that are waiting to do it next. That's kind of comical to think about nowadays. So one of the most in, uh, relevant internal communications we could deliver was that job board to all these GE employees. You can imagine how when workers see their most meaningful, most desired workplace communication appear at their fingertips that is available on their device at any time that they want to access it, it helps them stay more engaged. It is convenient to them. So this opens the door to communications for these folks. This opens the door for HR to reach. This opens the door for safety or compliance and all those different initiatives that companies might have announcements. So anyway, perhaps even more importantly, this technology is a tremendous medium for risk management. It provides real-time crisis communication for these workers. It gives delivery of instant information about safety and equipment malfunctions or product recalls or, or even natural disasters. So, and of course, it's easy as you go through um, union discussions and uh, companies are being uh, bought and sold, there are important things that you want to share with your audience before it gets to the presses. So we're actually very proud of that relationship. Another example is a, um, a hospice company that is doing probably some of the greatest work on the planet, which is taking care of the dying. And the folks that we work with at Hospice um, have uh, hundreds of people who are in the field taking care of people in their home. They don't have uh, mobile computers. They don't have the technology that big modern day healthcare hospitals have in the meaningful way that they do because they're very expensive. But they did need a way to share important patient care information in real time. And it had to be HIPAA compliant. And as there are a lot of restrictions around um, uh, sharing patient data. So in the past, they had to drive to local offices and get folders of information about patients or um, pull over on the side of the road and make phone calls because text messaging and email are really not often not HIPAA compliant. In this case, the messages were always relevant and they were always urgent and they were always used on their phones that they already had. So a really powerful, excellent way, an excellent example of enabling a workforce without the complexities or... Um, uh, some of the noise that 
information workers are burdened with on a daily basis. So certainly in the world of hospice and hospice care, likes and news feeds will be missed. Real-time communication with ReadyUp is powerful. And the last example I'll give you is Seminole Gaming. It's one of the most successful gaming companies in the country. They have 10,000 employees in Florida. And if you can imagine a big casino like this image you see on there, it is a combination of retail and restaurant and hospitality and facilities and uh, bartenders and poker dealers and housekeepers. And communication was a huge challenge for them. More than 75% of their workforce does not have company email. Now, more than 80% of their employees are hourly, and they have schedule changes each week, and they rarely have computer access, so they had this massive challenge. And that was, how do we enable our direct supervisors to communicate to tens, if not hundreds of employees, and enable those employees to communicate with each other in a way that includes the management team about shift changes and picking up shifts so that they can close the gap on shifts that are missed and also provide some approval processes for hundreds of workers to exchange shifts, but also then um, provide the business a um, tremendous amount of visibility as to what's happening. So when we consider how these employees operate day to day, you can see how much this medium means for hard rock cafes and casinos and the Seminole gaming casinos. So know your audience. It's super powerful. It seems like a simple idea. Um, but actually sitting in these areas, and sometimes we're often invited in for half-day um, educational pieces with companies before they roll these out to share and um, pull their audiences or their employee base about what they may like to see. Like I said earlier, ReadyApp is a communication platform, but it's also a file distribution platform. We can provide schematics and imagery and access to files and commonly asked questions and um, uh, imp appropriate phone numbers for people or emergency preparedness information all inside of ReadyApp and it becomes something that people go to as a reflex now in some of our companies. So anyway, as we craft these messages and they're tailored to the needs of the content and style or in tone and knowing what to say is really just two-thirds of your battle. What we now know is you have to know how to deliver it, by what channel, by what medium. So we are running out of time here. It is up to our hour. Um, I'll just say that technology is helping to bring our audiences and messages together in a loving way. We hope that uh, this was engaging and meaningful and that it was worth your hour today. We're certainly grateful for you spending the time. I would be um, uh, missed if I didn't say that please feel free to reach out if you'd like to learn more about ReadyApp. You want to contact somebody in sales. We have lots of ways to do that on our website, as you know, and that's probably how you got connected to us. Um, I'd like to kind of wrap up this formal portion and maybe take a couple seconds, few minutes here uh, to submit questions if you have any. We're happy to go through those um, and chat about them. Amy, I want to go ahead and take some of those questions from our, our crew. Thank you, thanks again, everybody, for joining us today. Yes. We will. If you um, if you have any questions, you can submit them in the chat window. We do have a couple that that were submitted during the during the presentation. So um, the first one, Jonathan, um, how can you know if you are giving the right employees the right tools? Well, um, uh, that's a great question. Um, we have seen many many companies go through the process of selecting the right tools and a lot of it is um, I mentioned a little bit earlier about people who are choosing the platform this is this is a difficult uh, situation because often we believe that our own behaviors are everyone's behavior and that what's a good tool for us must be a good tool for everyone and I think that comes with a little bit of dose uh, um, an ounce of humility I think we have to understand that there is a very different and some people will will select more um, social because that's that's how they you know it, it really matches well to the organization uh, the organization's goals so I would I would really encourage people to say what do we want to get with this capability what do we want to achieve is it a deeper connection deeper engagement do we want employees living our mission and our goals and our culture or do we need them talking to each other? Do we need a collaboration? And I would encourage folks that if collaboration is your purpose, then workflow tools may not 
be the most appropriate thing. So how you know if it's working or not is measurement. We really, really take measurement very seriously at ReadyApp. We track everything for our customers in terms of read rates and when people read and what day of the week. We're going through right now uh, a wonderful process with one of our customers about hourly connection. When are people doing it? What hours of the day are most effective? We really think uh, that the science needs to be added. So if you are rolling out a, a text blast product, if you are rolling out a social platform, measure it. Um, ask people what they like about it. You're not looking for 10% engagement, folks. You're not looking for 20% engagement. You are looking for 50, 60, 70, 80, 100% engagement with the product that you pick. So make sure whatever you pick, it's measurable. That's what I would say. Amy. Okay. Um, next question, what is an example of a tool that you would give a desk worker but not an hourly worker or vice versa? What is an example of a tool I give a desk worker and not, well, um, uh, chat's a great one. Um, a chat product for desk workers is awesome because you are working at your desk constantly, you are in a browser constantly, and little box in the top right hand corner comes in and gets your attention, it kind of pokes you on the head. But if you are an hourly worker and you are building product on a production line, or you are drilling oil wells, or you are um, dealing with customers all day, getting tapped on the shoulder all the time with a chat product is annoying. That's what I would say. That's my answer to that, Amy. What do you think about that one? <laughs> Good. Um, we have time for one more. Why do you think that hourly workers, or why would you say that hourly workers need to be engaged to do jobs that may not change from day to day? Um, well, I think it's about, um, it depends on getting engaged uh, on things that change is not necessarily the most important thing. I often think about it as a cultural, um, to recognize people uh, for the work that they're doing and trying to provide them a deeper access. It may be not uh, a tons of, of corporate or organizational benefit, but for an employee who doesn't have a deep connection with their employer, giving them access to information about HR and reminding them the critical nature of safety in maybe a production facility or reminding them even about simple things like how to take advantage of benefits. Maybe you get discounts and uh, for uh, providers and you want to share that. People often forget it when they clock in the morning, they clock out at night, they, they, they may be tired and they may not be engaged, but giving them access to it when they can access all of the company benefits and organization on their smart device and provide an easy way to get input or provide input to their organization is very powerful. They feel connected and people and employees want to belong. That's what I would say. Very good. Okay, folks, that is it. Thanks again for joining us. Again, reach out to us on the website, and um, we're happy to answer additional questions, and uh, grateful for your time today. Have a great rest of the week, and almost happy spring on Sunday. So long. <laughs>